What's up, guys? Hope you're feeling alive right now. I'm Micah Keneally, and I want to welcome you to Young Adults Today podcast, where we talk about reaching young adults in our world today. And like always, I'm joined by my husband and my co-host, Josiah. How are you doing today? Great, babe. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm on my third cup of coffee. Can you believe it? It's a, well, I guess it's noon right now. Holy cow. <laughs> I can but believe it. We are doing good and wonderful here in the state of Minnesota, and we have a very special guest that's joining us today. And Josiah, who do you want to reveal to the listener? Who's on the other side of this conversation? Well, I'm excited to throw out the first pitch. I'll introduce him in a moment, but I just want to say welcome. Daryl Strawberry is on the other end. Daryl, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, you guys. Oh, so excited. And really, if you're like me, Daryl needs no introduction, but he is described by many as a baseball legend who has um, really, people, audiences all around the world, stadiums have been dazzled by the dynamics of his game. His many accomplishments in the MLB include four World Series titles, eight All-Star Game appearances, and a nomination to the MLB Hall of Fame in 2004. He's earned legendary nicknames and phrases um, as one of the most feared home run hitters in the game of baseball. Uh, his nicknames were like Straw Sweet Swing, Strawberries Field Forever, and the legendary Straw Man, 17 seasons in the MLB. And even though he was extremely successful in his career. His personal time was played with addictions, abuse, divorces, cancer, jail time, and other issues. Daryl finally found redemption and restoration Amen. in Jesus Christ. We're going to get into all of that. If you know this, if you're a baseball fan or just a fan of life and the goodness of God, this is going to be a great time today. So Daryl, just want to throw out the first pitch. Can you just start off by sharing some of your story of journey of life? faith and baseball with uh, our audience today yeah well like again I said thank you for having me on your show here you, you guys are very very energetic and that's really good it's good to see uh you know life life is life you know and and for me my life is no different than the, the average person my my life just happened to be played out in the public eyes more than anything and i think uh we all uh come into this life in this society with broken pieces and you know I was no different I, I just grew up in a dysfunctional home my father was a raging alcoholic he came home for the last time when I was about 14 years old put out a shotgun said he was gonna kill the whole family had it not been for my mother me and my brothers would have killed my father that night so I'm trying to say to you guys tragedy in my life before I ever put the all people just see you put a uniform on and they think well you should have all together uh, I think what we don't understand, a uniform just covers up the, the wounds and the scars. That, that's all it does. You know, your talent or who you are usually cover up who you are because the reality of life is 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 real brokenness is is real. And, and, and we see it played out even more in our society today, um, you know, compared to what it was back then before. And, and for me, you know, I went through the real brokenness. And, you know, lawlessness brings about brokenness and brings about a broken generation of people. So my uniform covered up, you know, my wounds, but at the end, it, it never allows you to get free because you put on a uniform. See, I, I was privileged. You know, I lived behind community gates my whole life. My kids never went to public school. Uh, they had a lifestyle that I never grew up under. I grew up under a broken, dysfunctional home. And here it is, I give my kids the best life, but still, uh, the, the wounds are real. Uh, and eventually they're gonna play out in your life somewhere. And mine's just happened to play out in the public perception, you know, and, and, and opinions and stuff like that. And, but one thing I, I can say to you guys I'm so grateful for is because even though I was a heathen, a womanizer, drug addict, alcoholic, sinner, uh, saved by grace, my mother was praying for me when I was famous and rich. And she was praying that God, she was praying that God would knock me off my throne and save me. So I am forever grateful for my mother. I am forever grateful for my wife, Tracy. You know, God put two women in my life to spare my life. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's what God does. He never, he never leaves us alone. He always has somebody there for you. And I can sit here and tell you, uh, I'm blessed because of my mother. I am who I am today. I'm an evangelist. I travel maybe 250 times out of a year. It's because of my mother and my wife. And so I just want to encourage men to understand 
that woman that God gives you is a great thing. It's a yes. great helpmate. And a lot of times guys don't really understand that and accept that. And I didn't know that through the, the first two marriages I had and, and divorce. I hurt people because I was selfish and self-centered. And I didn't realize how great a, a woman is in your life that could be such a great help to you. But uh, I'm so thankful to my mother. She went home to be with the Lord at the age of 55. Oh, and, um, you know, she had terminal breast cancer. And when, when she left, you know, I, I was lost and broken. And But her prayers came to pass. And then, then my wife, Tracy, came into my life. And God used her to lead me back to him. So it's always a plan. God always has a great plan. Uh, sometime it, uh, it, it goes around about and we don't know what it's like. But if we stay faithful, we stay committed. Uh, to to who God is, eventually his plan comes to pass for your life. Well, Daryl, we are so excited and thank you for sharing parts of your story. And when you had said, even though your mom passed and the, the prayers continued, I think that is a form of a legacy that a believer gets to leave behind, that they may not be able to see the, the breakthrough moments that you had, the amazing marriage, the children, like all of that. But even for the listener today to realize that we all are broken, we are all in need of a savior, and we all have an opportunity to be redeemed when we step out of the way and allow God to peel back the layers of our heart like an onion and for us to really dig deep and work through what we need to work through um, the hurts the hurdles the hang-ups the tragedies the triumphs whatever that is and we um, as listeners many of them are believers they are pastors they are desiring to be a pastor they're in some form or role of leadership and hopefully they've all had this experience but Daryl would you be willing just to share that moment when you received God's grace what was that like <laughs> Well, it, it's totally incredible the moment that you receive it, but the moment that you understand it. I, I think we all receive it when we come down to the altar and accept, you know, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. That's the grace that's given to you. And I think a lot of us don't understand the grace. You know, we don't want to understand what grace is, you know. And he talks about it in Second uh, Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So he's talking about when we're weak, his grace is made perfect for us and we don't even know it. So when you really come to the place of understanding the grace, now you're able to live out the calling and the purpose of your life. Your life is far greater than what you achieve from an earthly standpoint. I think so many people are trying to achieve earthly standpoint things instead of kingdom standpoint things. And when you put yourself in a place to understand God's grace, and understand the kingdom of God, now you understand the reason for being here. You know, being, salvation is, is given free. You have to give yourself up to get salvation. It's a free gift, but you have to give yourself up. And then we have to go back and we have to show others who are lost and broken and hurting the love of Christ. I think what happens to understand grace is too many pastors and, 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 and leaders want to get in the pulpit and they get strangled because they're not ready and they're not living according to the biblical principles and the enemy is there to deceive you it's already a trap if you're not if you're not equipped to to be in the, in that position and prepared to be in that position and what i mean by that is not making it about yourself never make it about yourself mm -hmm. you know make it about make it about jesus i've seen too many young leaders want to get into the pulpit and want to make it about how good i sound it's not about how good you sound the enemy Enemy knows everything about us, you know, and, and he, and, you know, we have to prepare ourselves to know it's not about how good I sound, it's about how I live and mm -hmm. what I, what I, what people see in our life. And I think that's the difference in my life today of talking about Jesus. I, I, there was a time I just knew his name, but I denied his power like most of us, but now I know how great his power is. So I try to display what his power is all about, not what I'm about. We're just, mm -hmm. we're just vessels. When you understand you're a vessel, for God and you're able to do God's work, you're able to help so many people across the board. Yes, spot on with that, Daryl. And some of my earliest memories in life were sitting in my parents' basement with my dad, turning on the TV and watching baseball. Baseball is really one of the things that my dad and I bonded over, playing catch every, every day when he would get home at 4.30 and just watching games together or talking about life uh, you know, watching a baseball diamond or on a baseball diamond. And um, I also 
called one of our great friends. His name's Kendall Devnich. And I called him this morning and I said, what comes to mind when you hear the words or the name Daryl Strawberry? And he's like, oh man, legendary New York Met. And he just started talking about one of the sweetest swings in all of baseball history, <laughs> effortless talent, natural talent. And I said, Kendall, if you could ask Daryl Strawberry one question today, what would it be? He's like, man, he's like, well, he's like, I would ask him about like when he had such talent, how um, he was like just able to, or really like at times held back maybe by drugs or addictions or that side. So could you go there for a moment, Daryl, and just talk about like at the pinnacle of your career, was there something that you felt was more or something that you felt was missing at all? Well, I've really never as far as the baseball standpoint, because that's a talent, you know, and, and that's a, and, and God gives us all a talent to do something. First of all, you know, you, you're in Minnesota. So, you know, you, the great late uh, Kirby Puckett, you know, who was a dear friend. So uh, uh, we celebrate him. What a, what a player in his time yes. up there, you know. Uh, so when you talk about baseball and I think about that area, you know, and I think about St. Paul, you know, I came to St. Paul and played up in that area too. So yes, the Saints. Uh, the Saints, yeah. The great Saints and the fans were up there were amazing the people. And, and baseball, baseball is a game. And, and when you look, growing up as a kid, you know, uh, either you're going to be a be this particular type of player or you're not. You know, you, you, you kind of make that up uh, very quickly inside of yourself to understand who you are. And I think I, I made that up quickly inside of myself, you know, because I had multi-talent. I could have played basketball or baseball, but I made the choice to play baseball because I like that one-on-one -on -one competition. And I, and I think I was multi-talented to be able to play the game, but I wasn't quite a man. If, you, if, if that could make sense, you know, I always tell people putting on the uniform doesn't make you a man. It makes you a baseball player and putting on the basketball uniform makes you a basketball player. Football makes you a football player. Doesn't really make you a man, you know, just ha having a uniform on. You have the uniform on because you have tremendous talent and you're able to play at such a high level and you're very gifted and you understand the gift. Uh, but uh, that's all really, really was, you know, I understood my gifting as a, as a, as a talented player that I could do just about anything I wanted to on the baseball field. Because one thing I learned over the years, you know, growing up is I was never, I was never afraid to fail. Failure is a part of succeeding. And I yeah. think sometime in life we think that, you know, fail, you know, failing at that level and, and going through some hard times. Cause I went through some hard times in baseball just as well as I went in life. And how did I come out on, on the other end of baseball? I just kept pursuing and kept pushing and kept growing so you know the talent was always there and you know my mindset was always there to be able to play at the high, highest level and do whatever I could on, on the ball field and I wasn't afraid I wasn't afraid of failure I think that's what made me be very successful that's so fun <clears throat> it's fun to realize and recognize just like how you described your identity or like putting on a baseball jersey and recognizing yeah you're a part of the team but how are you going to step up to the plate? How are you going to step up to the things in life? And I think that is where a lot of uh, the listeners are today. Um, obviously, we're coming out of COVID or out of 2020, I should say, maybe not so much COVID, but a lot of them are ministry leaders right now. And many of them have come off a very challenging year in 2020 from having to constantly pivot their ministry to go online to experiencing loneliness, anxiety, depression, maybe in ways that they never have. And how can the listener today, how would you encourage them to turn their season around and to not put their identity in what they do, but who God is and what he wants to do this next, this next year coming up? What would you say to that person who's being challenged today? That's really good, you know, because everyone has, has had experienced this challenge of life, what we've been through for us in 2020 uh, year. And, you know, it's good to know God, you know, it's, it's the best time that you can know God. It's the, it's the time that you can saturate yourself and get closer to God. I mean, the six months, seven months of being home, people say, well, what are you, what did you do? I said, I got, I, I got closer to God. I, I spent time in, in the word and I, I tuned out of the television. I took that cell phone, you put it down, you put it away and you come closer into your relationship with God. So you can know what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, the, what, what people don't understand is, you know, Christians and leaders have to understand the Bible clearly talks about it. There's going to be trials and tribulations. Here we are, trials and tribulations. How do you 
deal with trials and tribulations. You grow. You grow in the midst of trials and tribulations. This is where your faith is really going to be challenged and where you're going to see how you truly operate and do you truly believe what you preach. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times we can preach stuff, we can minister to others, but do you truly believe it when you're hit with it? And I had to experience that too. And I thought it was just the most amazing time to be able to sit with God and just and just learn more about me and learn more about a, a, the calling that's up on your life because the calling is far greater than the problems mm -hmm. and the situations that we look at. Because I do know one thing at the end of the day, this is not home. And, you know, God didn't call us for us to say, well, we want to stay here and we want to see all this uh, good happen here. When, whenever he decides he's ready to call you, call you away from here you got to be prepared in your heart that you know you've done the work that he's called you to do it's it's the work it's the appetite mm -hmm. for the work that he's called you to do and you got to fight through and you got to press through and you got to push through and you got to and you got to be able to encourage others see we are the ones that are called to encourage others in the midst of the storm mm -hmm. because i i can tell you guys right now it's like this it's either a storm is coming or you are or you just got out of a storm are, are, are you in the midst of it? You know, is you in the midst of it or one's coming and you're just getting out of one. So it's the storms of life. How do we deal with the storms of life? And how do you handle those situations? And I, I think the best way to handle those situations is knowing who you are in Christ. That's mm -hmm. the most important mm -hmm. thing. You must know who you are. You must not waver about that, who you are in Christ. I think so many get to the place and, and especially young leaders, you, you, you're at the beginning of who you are. It's just the beginning. Don't worry about it. If God's called you to it, he's going to see you through it. You just have to come to the place yeah. and believe in that. That's so good. When COVID started happening, Josiah and I looked at each other and said, we are not going to sit in this season and not do anything. That's right. So we prayed and we just felt the last, me personally, I think the last three to five years as God keeps putting on my heart, heaven minded urgency, a heaven minded urgency to do exactly what you said, to build God's kingdom and not our own, to dig deep with him and to go deep and wide with the roots. And when the trials and tribulations come, how are we going to respond? Are we going to run around like Henny Penny, the sky is falling? Or are we going to say, no, God is still like, Jesus is still seated at the right hand of the father. Right. And right. Um, so when COVID happened, Josiah and I are like, we are not going to come out of however long this season is with nothing to show for it. So to the listener today, if you've done exactly the opposite of what Daryl just said, if you are turning on Netflix and tuning into your phone, mm -hmm. instead of opening your Bible and shutting the computer, like I would encourage you to take these next couple months and really dive into what does God have for you yeah. in 2021? Like yeah. maybe 2020 yeah. is a year that you kind of start to go down the toilet and you just want to say, Hey, I need to be redeemed of my 2020. Not that you lost out, but you, ch you chose not to participate in the way maybe God was beckoning your heart. So um, with that, I know that you have a very fun season that you're stepping into. You've already done it, but it's going to go public soon. And I'm going to let Josiah ask this next question about a project you have been working on, Daryl. Well, so excited because, I, and I think the timing really, God's timing is perfect. He's rarely early. And when, when we measure it, he's never late and he's right on time. And I think this book, this message that you've written, and it's about to go out into the world, is very prophetic in its timing. It's talking about turn your season around. And I think that Man, nobody knows that better than a baseball player because, you know, if you're a sports fan, you watch, and baseball's a unique sport. There's like 162 games, and people are going to have strikeouts. They're going to hit some home runs. They're going to have some moments where they're hit by pitch. They're walked intentionally. Change Man. their swing. <laughs> and, and so much of the game of baseball is a mental game. It's one of the most mental games of all time. And one of the things you've written about, Daryl, that I agree with 100%, just wholeheartedly, it resonates with who we are and just what we believe about God. And you write about, Daryl, the importance of renewing your mind. Mm -hmm. And can you go there for a minute and talk about why renewing your mind is so vital, not just for a baseball player, but for anyone desiring more of God and desiring to turn their season around? Yeah, that's really good. That's really good, Josiah. There, you know, re renewing your mind is so critical for all of us. You know, to, and, and, and life and baseball, like you said, it's going to be some highs, some lows, ups and downs, and in between, are you going to kick yourself? Or are you going to stay focused? Are you going to keep pushing, 
pushing forward and, and keep pursuing, you know, even in the midst of the challenges and the struggles that you go through in, in, in the course of a season. Like you said, 162 ball games. It's going to be some tough times. So how do you, how do you, how do you deal with that? And, and, and I was thinking about that when I decided to write this book. I didn't want to write another book. You know, my wife kept pushing me and the Lord kept saying, pressing on me. I didn't know, I didn't know writing this book that COVID-19 would come in the midst wow. of writing a book. And I was asking the Holy Spirit, I said, well, what's the title? And he said, how about turn your season around? And I was thinking in the midst of turning your season around, it's just like turning your season around in the ball game. Okay, the first half of the season, the media could write you off and say, well, he's not going to really have a great season. But they forgot it's 80 games left. The season's not over. It's the whole second half of the season. And this is the way it is for life. You know, you may go through the first six months that may be difficult, but there's another six months left, you know, for you to turn that around. It's up to you to turn that around, to apply yourself, to renew your mind and apply yourself to the principles over and over and over again. I, I think so many of us get so far off not applying ourselves to the principles because we think, oh, I already know that. Well, I think about keep reading the Bible. Everybody in the Bible that God called, they all had issues, but God used them mightily. And I think about King Solomon, how he was writing the book of Proverbs, wisdom and knowledge. Then he goes back and writes the book of Ecclesiastes, how sorry, meaningless, how everything is meaningless without, uh, without God under the sun, you know, because he did not stay the course. He went a different course. And that's what happens to so many of us. You know, we get sidetracked in the midst of where we're at and there's a different course we start taking. And, and, and I think that's the wrong turn that people start taking and they start believing it's them and believing the hype of who they are and I, I'm this and I should be that. And it's not, it's not that. Just be what God wants you to be. Stay in that, stay at that place with God. Psalms 4610 talks about it. Be still and know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. You have to be still and know that He got He's God, even in the most difficult times and situations that one go through. And that's what we've been through. And when I was writing this book, I I told my writer, I, just, I didn't want to write another book. I wanted to write a book about scriptures because I think the problem is, is so many people wave across the scriptures and they don't know the meaning of the scriptures. You got to go deeper to understand the scriptures. You got to chop them up. And I remember, I remember reading uh, through Billy Graham books and watching his crusades because I'm a big fan of Billy Graham, my evangelist, winning souls, because I'm all about souls. And I just remember him saying, about how Christians don't know scriptures. Mm -hmm. They just don't know the meaning of them. And that's why they're not having a victorious life. And I think turning your season around is what, you know, what I preach is how I preach. It's I preach under scriptures because that's what turns your season around, knowing the scriptures and living by the scriptures and applying the scriptures to your daily life. And I think if more Christians and even young leaders, if you get to that place where you saturate yourself with scriptures and start memorizing scriptures and not in your head, but in your belly, and you start understanding that the scriptures will flow out of you supernaturally, that's how you learn to live. That's how you have that transformation. That's how you have that Romans 12, too, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, that's where all that takes place when you allow yourself to go deeper than you've ever been. And I think so many of us don't go deep enough. We stay on the surface. And when you think about Jonah and when God told him to go to Nineveh, he was on the surface and he jumps on a boat to go the other way to Tarshish. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's what we do. You know, that's what people do. And and they don't, don't want to hear God. And God, Scott, God, had a, God had a plan for him at that time by throwing him in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. So, you know, God has a plan for us too when we come to that place, when we get off track, and then he has to stop us and he has to put us back, sit us back down to remind us mm -hmm. that it's not about you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if, if people can, leaders and people can remember that it's not about me, it's about what he wants to do through you. And when you understand what he wants to do through you, then God turns everything around for you. It's amazing. <clears throat> Daryl, that's amazing. And you brought up Billy Graham and man, I'm thankful for his influence because when I was five and he was 75, he came to town in Minneapolis and my parents brought our family to the Metrodome and that's where I made a decision to follow Christ. And it was a lifelong Amen. decision. And so I look at the work that Billy Graham did 
And there's a legacy that lives on even into eternity. And the work that you're doing now mm -hmm. as an evangelist, we'll only know once we reach heaven what God has in store. And, and you talk about it's not about us. And when we fix our eyes on eternity and renew our mind on God's eternal promises mm -hmm. and his purposes, it takes the temporary, the, the pain, the <laughs> the nervousness, <laughs> the anxiety, and the fear, and right. all of a sudden they disappear, mm -hmm. and we get washed over with peace and mercy and grace. So Yeah, that's really exciting. But Daryl, I'd also ask you this. I just think about the listeners today, and many of them, like we said, are coming out of a hard season. They're hopefully, hopefully they're praying to be transformed by the renewing of their mind each and every day, that they're heaven-minded, that they are reading the word of God, that it's not only being written in their heart, but in their soul. And it's being lived out actively. And sometimes when we lean into more of what God has, we know that the enemy has those tactics to throw things back in our face, to throw our past, our mistakes, regrets, doubt, fear, worry, whatever um, sticks to us. And he knows the weakness of that. And a lot of the times when that happens, the scars come out from the mm. past. And I was just wondering, scars share a story. And I think you could do two things with scars. One, you can allow them to, um, to be told as a story and allow um, God's glory to shine through it. And he can take that bitter scar and turn it into something beautiful and sweet. Or we could be the type of believer where we hold onto that scar. We don't reveal it. We keep it bandaged up and it's never actually healed. And the enemy gets the glory essentially in that versus God getting the glory. So what would you sh uh, share about um, scars and stories? And what would you, what would you say about that? Uh, you make a really good point there. Cause I know so many people are so afraid to share their scars and their stories. You know, your, 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 your stories are, are God's glory. You know mm -hmm. what he what he's done in your life, and I think so many people need need to get past that. Why are we so afraid to show our scars? You know, and and what Jesus talked about in John ten ten, you know, talked about the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Then on the second half, he says, "I have come that you may have life and may have it more abundantly." See, I think a lot of times a lot of people don't understand the abundant life. Abundant life is peace, joy, wisdom, knowledge, power. It's far greater than them sitting around thinking it's, it's more, I need more of this or more of that. And, and then, when, then when we have the old come up of our scars, why are we so afraid to show our scars? Jesus showed his wounds to us on the cross. Wow. You know, what are we, why are we so afraid to show our wounds and scars? Here's the man that went to the cross of Calvary and showed us all his wounds. Mm -hmm. and, and then went to the tomb and then early Sunday morning got up from the tomb and got up with all power. So why are we so afraid to show our scars of what we've been through when he's already done it for everything that could kill us? They need to remember this. Jesus already killed it. I don't care what kind of scars and wounds that you have. He's already killed it. If he's restored you to wholeness, you are free. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the enemy comes and say, you know, because he's going to, the enemy's always going to say, well, you used to be this and you are, used to be that. Yeah, I used to be, right. but right. I, but I am, but, but, I, but today I am living a redeemed life regardless of what I used to be. You know, I can remember a, a lot when I was always in trouble, the media would always have me in the headline news, you know, there it was cameras and everything. But now ever since I've been preaching the gospel, where are they? They're nowhere to be found. So that right there tells you right there who wins. You automatically mm -hmm. win if you can understand from your scars and your wounds, you're afraid to show them. Your scars and your wounds are going to help somebody else get healed. Right. Remember yeah. that. You know, and that's what so many of us have to remember. Me talking about my story, but my victory has come through Christ Jesus is going to help somebody else get healed. Always remember that. Your scars and wounds, you went through them for a reason. Uh, you went through them for a season. Yes, it might have been hard, but look at you today. You've been victorious. You're overcomer by the blood of the lamb. You're not overcome by man. You overcome by the blood of the lamb, and you need to walk that out. I think so many young people, if I could tell you I'm 58, I'll be coming on 59 soon. If, if I walk through so much, but I, I got so much victory now because of knowing who you are in Christ regardless of what you've been through. And I think that's what's so, so important for those that are probably sitting and worrying about the scars. Show your scars, man. Jesus showed us the scars. Show your wounds. He showed us his wounds. And then when you understand that, you can help somebody else get well. Because at the end of the day, 
guys, the most important thing is, is leading somebody else to salvation. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, that's what God is crazy about when we lead others to salvation and that they can find Jesus as Lord over their life. When you say um, to be willing to share your scars as part of your story, one of the things that I think about, Daryl, is how God wastes nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything he uses in life is for a purpose. The big things and the behind the scenes, mm -hmm. the things that are public and the things that are private. And I just think of even today, one small example, Micah will know this, um, some of our listeners will know this, is my passion for baseball. I, I love baseball and I love how God can use our calling and weave in our passions mm -hmm. and how he puts a passion on your heart and it's not for nothing. He doesn't waste it. Sometimes we face a hardship or we're in the, the thick of the moment where the struggle is very real. And what we need to do is we need to hold on to hope because Jesus hung on the cross and he wastes nothing. He doesn't waste the scar. He doesn't waste the story. And it's going to encourage others, like you said. And so one of our favorite parts of this podcast, Daryl, that we're really excited about, we call it the five in five, except today we changed the name to Extra Innings. And if you're up for it, your book talks about nine innings. If you wanted to go one step deeper into extra innings, and we, we will give you five questions <laughs> in five minutes, kind of rapid fire like a home run derby. Are you up for some extra innings? Extra innings, yeah. I played a few of those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want me to go? Okay. You'll go first. All right, Daryl, question number one. If you could describe your soul right now in your current season, what would three words be to describe it? Wow, three words to be to describe my soul. Yeah. Well, I can say my soul is 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 joyful and, uh, in in this season, and it's 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 free. You know, it's free and liberated more than anything. I, I just I, I think it's important to be joyful in every season that we go through, mm -hmm. and 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 to understand that I'm free and I've been liberated. I'm I'm liberated. I'm not held down. I'm not held down because of the crisis that we are in this country. I think too many of us to hold ourselves hostage in that area mm -hmm. and, and not know that you're liberated. I'm liberated. I don't care what's going on, no matter what. God is still on the throne and God is still God. That's good. Amen. Amen. How about this, Daryl? It could be a verse, a quote, <clears throat> you know, something that comes from scripture or something that maybe a mentor has spoken into your life. But the question number two would be, are there any words that you live by and hold on to? Well, yeah, I, I do. I, I live by believing, and I, and I think it comes from the book of John, uh, believing that the miracles that Jesus did back then, you know, turning water into wine, feeding 5,000, raising Lazarus from the dead, all the miracles he did. Uh, when you believe that, and then you go to uh, John 3, Nicodemus, where he, he said, unless one is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then you see all the other miracles. So I believe the miracles are, are set for us today. I think so many people don't look, when they, I don't think when they understand uh, the Bible and, and they don't realize that those same miracles back then are the same miracles today, right. you know, and, 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 and that's believing you, but you got to believe that. That's why the book of John is so powerful uh, of believing. That's good. Okay. Question number three, we're going to, this is going to be um, a curveball for you. If you could okay. ask us one question, what would you ask us today? Um, I, I would ask you guys to, I mean, you, you're very, you're very close together. I can see, and and how 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 can you help more young uh, ministers, you know, uh, pull their life together and have such great joy and understanding uh, uh, for the Lord? Yeah, <clears throat> that's it's fun. It keeps us on our toes when <laughs> the guest asks us a question. So, I mean, I would I would say for Mike and I, what we feel that we know, that we know, we know is that God has called us and that like I, I stand on the promise kind of a word that I live by is first Thessalonians 5 24 the one who calls you he is faithful and he will do it mm -hmm. and so I think the question that Mike and I ask ourselves each other in, in ministry in life at home with our daughter with everything is mm -hmm. like okay God's called us mm -hmm. he's powerful he's faithful he's going to do it so how can we 
join in what God's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that takes it off of, it takes the burden off of me. It takes the burden off of her. And we, when we focus on like, what can we do together? What is he asking us to do today? Then the interruptions, the discouragements, anything that he's, you know, the enemy throws at us or that God assigns us to, we're ready to face head on. And I look at also when I think of what God's taken us from individually and together, mm -hmm. That's where the joy comes from is knowing God, having a peace, mm -hmm. having just an optimism that we've renewed our minds and nothing that we've done, but God's renewed our minds. So that's how I would answer it. What about you? I would just say recognizing the fact that one, we're built for community and Christ needs to be the center of that. And we have an opportunity to invite people into that, maybe a non-believer, maybe a pre-believer, maybe an existing believer, and to see them be um, set free like you talked about it. I think about for the sun sets free, he's free indeed. And I just think about how we can live out in freedom and live out in joy and to recognize the most freeing thing I think for me is I'm not perfect, I'm not God, and I'm not the Holy Spirit. But hey, I serve a perfect God I can be in tune with the Holy Spirit and he's going to use me, like you said, a vessel. And I just want to come with open, willing hands and a heart to serve his vision, just like we would come under any pastor on this earth, but to serve the ultimate king and his vision for my life and to recognize that apart from him, we can do nothing. And when we recognize that I'm not perfect, I'm not in control and I'm never going to arrive. I just think that that stirs my heart of um, just recognizing the goodness of God and recognizing you know, that we all have an opportunity and what we say yes to and what we say no to is very important. And along with that, I would also just recognize the fact that we get to do life together, that life yeah. is a gift and each breath is a gift from God. And I think that's just where my head and heart go of recognizing, I keep saying recognizing on my word, that, um, <laughs> I think I'm just doing a lot of self-reflection in this question right now, but know that God is good. And no matter what we say, no matter what we do, he's going to use us. And just being available, I think is the biggest thing. And to be humbled in that process, to say yes to a form of ministry is, is near and dear to our hearts. And that's something that we want to do hopefully for a lifetime. And it's a life that's well used and lived out. So yeah, well, I'm done recognizing things. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that, 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 that's really good, you guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's good to see, you know, it's good to see out of uh, uh, young people, you know, that they have their priorities right and their focus right and their center right. And, and I would just encourage you guys, you know, uh, stay in humility because if you stay humble, God exalts you and, and, and stay in your lane. You know, that, that's what I try to, don't try to be like nobody else. You know, you, you guys right. are very unique. You know, people want to be like somebody else. They idolize this person, that person, and they get off track. And you don't, you don't know where that person come from. You don't know their struggles. You don't know their burdens. So we have our own struggles and our own burdens to deal with. So, we, you know, me and my wife have, have learned to just stay in our lane and God like used us supernaturally because, you know, we started, when we started this journey, like 21 years ago, you know, I, I was like $3 million in debt and didn't have a driver's license and, and God, we stayed in our lane and we stayed with God and we didn't want to be important. And God multiplied us, increased us, and used us mightily in the land. So I would just so encourage you guys in that. We receive that. Word Definitely. Of humility. Yeah. It's Definitely. Good. Spot on, Daryl. We receive that. And question four, back to the home run derby, is okay. would there be maybe one moment or one situation where maybe you felt discouraged or you felt like you made a mistake or you felt like maybe even fa you, you failed? Um, and, and would you be willing to go there and then talk about what God taught you through that process? Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of mistakes, you know, and I, I felt like I, I, I really, I really was a failure as a father, you know, to my kids, you know, because I thought being a father uh, and being a successful baseball player, uh, they never had to live, you know, struggling like I did, you know, they had everything at their finger, fingertips and, 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 went to private schools and everything. And, you know, I, I thought that I was doing the right thing, but I, I mean, I thought that was more important than me being there, being the father, you know, and, and being the dad that I need to be uh, like I am today, you know, I'm available. See back then I wasn't available. I wasn't make, I was like, well, I'm taking care of everybody. So I have the rights to do whatever I want and be wherever I want to be. 
And um, that 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 was a part that I learned that from God that you when you when I came to the place of having a relationship with God, it was it was never about me anymore. Mm-hmm. I made had made that clear in my life that it would never be about me. I would never make it about me, and I would always make it about those that are around me because God has spared me and saved me, and He had transformed my life and changed me and and brought me into a, a better better understanding of the person that I was supposed to be and what, what I was created to be. And when you learn that from God, then, you know, that's, that's the humility. That's what I love about Moses, you know, because Moses had a speech impediment and, you know, he, he just felt like he wasn't qualified to be used by God and God just used him mightily to, to lead the Israelites. So when you can get to that place and understand that God, God loves the humility of a man, you know, it doesn't make you weak. It makes you better. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's a place that, that made me grow and understand the importance of, you know, walking with God. That's so good. That's just a reminder of God's grace when he teaches us something that is extremely important to him and to those around us. So, yeah. all right. The final question, Daryl, if you could tell a group of college pastors and young adult ministry leaders, one thing, what would you leave them with today? Um, stay in your lane and, and just be yourself. You're very unique. Don't, you know, don't try to operate and be like anybody else. Be who God's called you to be. There's, there's a gift that God is stirring up inside of you that you don't even know about. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just the beginning of where you're at. So stand in your lane and, and, and just that humility uh, that you walk in uh, will, will take you to a place that you could never imagine. You know, because if you, if you see, your, if you're young and you, you see yourself and you think you overqualify, God's not going to use that. Right. You know, he, he, he looks at the one that doesn't think he's qualified enough to do it because the, it's, it's so much bigger than you can imagine. You think you're qualified. If you think you're so qualified and you get out there and you run into that brick wall and the devil hits you in the back of the head with a brick, then you would be looking at yourself and thinking to yourself, oh my God, I shouldn't have never put myself on this pedestal and thinking I'm all that in the bag of chips. And if you could sit back and realize that, you know, God's going to use me the way he wants to use me. And if I allow that to happen, he's going to take me to places that I could never imagine. And that's what happened to my life. That's what happened to my wife's life. I, I could, could never imagine that God would call me and put me in places and put me preaching in front of thousands when I'm not qualified. And, and that's, the, that's the humility that I, that I learned, you know, through the fact of being like Moses. When I read about Moses, how he was, he was, he, he was, God, he was used mightily by God because of his meekness. He, he had meekness yeah. in him and he walked with God that way and meekness is not a weakness i've learned that no. i look at the definition and i'm like whoa <laughs> i always thought meek was like oh quiet and shy no 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 look up that in the dictionary today that's your assignment listeners <laughs> <laughs> it is it's not a weakness it, it's something great that god loves about a man and a woman who can walk with meekness and, and walk with humility and not be you know, too far over the top because what happens is the ego. Remember, young people, I'm telling you because I played Major League Baseball for 17 years and I saw egos flying all over the place and macho ego guys and your ego will destroy you. It's a three-letter word. Easy God out. Oh my gosh. On that right there. Mike <laughs> drop, Daryl. <laughs> I, I just think of like the person who's listening today, maybe in their car, maybe in their office, might be working out on the treadmill, lifting weights. And I just think that God wants to take you on an adventure if you're available, if you're willing, if you're just mm-hmm. humble enough to say, God, I, I'm available. Will you use me? And then what I picture is the outcome of that. You talked about the outcome of ego is easy God out. Never heard that. That's powerful. And then you have the moment where you get hit up the back of the head and it hurts. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the outcome of ego, but I think the outcome of availability matched with humility is I can't believe we get to do this. What an adventure, what an opportunity. And so Daryl, thanks so much for investing in Micah and I, investing Mm -hmm. in our listeners today with young adults today. We are so excited about your new book, Turn Your Season Around. We just want to encourage everyone to pick up a couple copies, go through it with your small groups. Um, This is going to be a great resource that we believe God is going to use to encourage many people. 
Well, thank you guys. And I, I really appreciate you guys. I like young people and I like encouraging young people into their destiny. And just remember, you know, just remember too, one other thing as I close this out is when you say yes, yes is a three letter word, Y-E-S. It means you enjoy salvation. Ooh. Wow. Well, let's all enjoy some salvation today and get out there, That's evangelize, right. share your faith. And you can check out the book in our show notes at, at youngadults.today. Until next time, this is Mike and Josiah signing off with Daryl Strawberry. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Boom.